It's a Sunbelt Tuesday. App State hosting Coastal. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm Dave Schultz, your host. You're watching Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. All right. In today's episode, we'll preview tonight's big matchup, App State and Coastal. Uh, we'll recap what we didn't uh, from week six, and we'll look ahead to week seven and there are some Sunbelt guys, you know, among the league leaders, the league leaders, the nation's leaders, Kamani Vidal leading the, the nation in rushing, Colin Lacey from South Alabama, uh, third in the nation in receiving. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. All right, so big ball game uh, tonight with App State hosting Coastal. Obviously, you know, these guys were off Saturday getting uh, an extra couple of days uh, to get ready, and I'm not so sure – this game is going to be all that close, uh, to be honest. I, I, I just don't think. I just don't think this is the normal coastal that we've been seeing for a while, and I think App is pretty good. I do. I, I'm, I don't think that you know. Well, you know, they struggled with Monroe. I don't look at it that way. I really don't. I think they're a pretty good football team. I think they let one slip away against Wyoming, who we find out is a pretty good uh, football team. And they lost to Carolina, who is also a pretty good football team. Uh, we did see pictures of Ryan Berger throwing. I still presume that it's going to be uh, Joy Aguilar, who has had a very good season for App State filling in. Uh, in the last minute, uh, or early on, I should say, in the first minute, basically, of uh, the first game of the season. He's got 1,200 uh, yards, 12 touchdowns, five interceptions. He's been very good. Uh, again, they let one slip away against Wyoming, had a, a two-score lead, but immediately that was one score, right? So I don't know how fair that is, right? You get the pick six, and then you give up a 75-yard touchdown run, uh, and basically it was back to a, a one-score a game again. You get Nate Noel, who's among the nation's leaders, as well in rushing, uh, 651 yards, more than five yards of carry. He's only got four touchdowns, though, so it'd be nice to see him get into the end zone a little bit more often. Let's see what this matchup looks like in terms of uh, the statistics against each other. Because Coastal, a lot of people still think Coastal is the old Coastal. I mean, Grayson McCall, again, I think he had eight interceptions in his first three years. He's got six this season. It's not the same thing. Coastal's offense is still really good because of Grayson McCall. You know, they're about even, not much of a difference. App State brings in about uh, 40 more yards, yards passing Coastal a little bit more. And on the ground, App State is rushing for 200 yards a ball game. That's really impressive. Uh, defensively, they're about the same. Neither one of them. All that great apps giving up 365 yards. Coastal almost 400 yards a game defensively. Uh, and so there doesn't seem to be a big advantage for one team. ESPN only has App State winning this ball game by, you know, 55, 45, if you will. Let's see what the line is because I really like App State in this ball game. I'm not sure why that seems to be an issue. Uh, it, it seems as though I mean, we had somebody say that Coastal was going to kill him, and I just don't. I just don't see that being the case. I think App State could run away from them uh, if they play just a little bit of defense. I think App has played much better than Coastal this year. Coastal has just again, it's just it's not a bad football team. It's just not the Coastal we're used to, right? They you know could not stop Georgia Southern at all. Right, they could not stop Georgia State for a lot, 
and and now they're on the road again. And then they go on the road to Arkansas State, you know, after, well, after this Saturday off, if you will, because they're playing on a Tuesday. Then they're going to Arkansas State, who, you know, is not easy uh, to beat because they got a pretty good offense when not facing Troy's uh, defense. So I just, I just don't see how Coastal wins this game. They're going to have to get some turnovers. I think this is all App State uh, tonight. I really do. It'll be interesting to see if if Ryan Berger gets into the ball game. You know, do they start easing him back? You know, is it is it easy? Is it even a situation? Well, you don't lose your job because of injury. Well, circumstances happen, and Joy Aguilar is playing well. So I, you know, wasn't the easiest win against Monroe. They gave up a bunch of points. You know, South Alabama went into Monroe didn't give up anything. You know, seven points. But again, we've talked about this. Winning in college football is not easy. Winning on the road is that much more difficult. Getting a goal line stand and kicking a 54-yard field goal to win, that's pretty cool. So, you know, again, I'm still trying to figure out what the spread is in this. Oh, six and a half. App State, six and a half, over under 61. I'd be more apt to, well, I think both. I think App State's going to win it rather easily, at least by a touchdown, and I would take the over. All right, this good chance that both teams are scoring 30 points. App State may put up a 40 spot against Coastal Carolina. Uh, we shall see. But I, I would look for App State uh, to win uh, this ballgame. All right, when we come back, we'll continue recapping week six. Uh, Kamani Vidal has another special week. He is the nation's leading rusher. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Some bell guy leading the nation in rushing. We have a new sponsor to tell you about. It is Price Picks. Let's see if we can get it here. There we go. Price Picks is a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. How does it work? You pick two to six players, and if they will go more or less than their Price Picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. At Price Picks, you aren't competing against other people, it's just you versus the projections. Available instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. Price pick entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Price picks offers a recently improved deposit and withdrawal experience, including the option to use Apple Pay for quick deposits into your account. Example, all right, so you could be App State if they're available. But for example, last night with Jimmy G, you could have had, or Green Bay, you could say, I'm taking. Jimmy Garoppolo to throw for more than 200 passing yards. And Devontae Smith to have more than a 50 yards receiving, which he didn't. <laughs> Something along uh, those lines. Uh, and so it is really easy to use. It's a lot of fun. And we're offering you a special opportunity. Go to prizepicks.com, locked on college, and use code Lockdown College for a first deposit matchup to $100. All right. It's going to go to prizepicks.com slash Lockdown College and use code Lockdown College for a first deposit match of up to $100. So they're giving you $100 when you deposit $100. Bucks. It's highly encouraged. to uh, So uh, it's daily fantasy sports made easy. It's a great opportunity. It's a lot of fun. I have issues playing fantasy football, although I did win twice. Uh, this is maybe more up your alley than what I have to deal with. <laughs> it is prizepicks.com slash locked on college. All right, Dave Schultz, locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's continue to go back. We didn't finish up with the uh, week six recap. And we were wondering what was going to happen in that Troy Arkansas State ball game. And, you know, the line was like 16 and a half, and Troy just dominated. Kamani Vidal, 28 carries, 245 yards, had three touchdowns. All right. Gunnar Watson didn't need to be great. A uh, little bit of an off day efficiency-wise, 12 of 21, but 236 yards and a touchdown. 
How about Deshaun Stoudemire receiving four catches, 98 yards. He didn't get the score, but Chris Lewis, of course, one catch, 60, <laughs> one catch, 64 yards, and a touchdown. So, and Vidal, again, leads the nation in rushing. All right. Jalen Rayner got a little bit of an education. Uh, he's been very good so far for Arkansas State. A bunch of points, not on Saturday against Troy. 12, uh, 15 to 27, 156. No touchdowns or uh, picks. And this was, I just think, all Troy from uh, the get-go. They had 20 first downs to Arkansas State's 10. Troy racked up 587 yards, almost 600 yards of offense for Troy. And they held Arkansas State to 203. Right now, right now, uh, we'll put a date on this since uh, some have edited my uh, words. Feels like the timing is off. October 10th, I would tell you that Troy is the best team in the West. It's going to be a heck of a battle for uh, the Cajuns to go into Troy and win that football game. All right. They almost did it last year in Louisiana. Probably should have. But we'll see what happens uh, this season. If the offense gets better for Louisiana, more consistent, stops turning the ball uh, over, they have a shot. All right. We'll have to see how that goes. It's a few weeks. I don't think they play Troy until like November 11th, something like that. In fact, maybe November 18th. So there's there's a ways to go before uh, the Cajuns head up to Troy. But right now, Troy is the best team in the West. In fact, yeah, it's November 18th. So it's more than a month. Troy's getting Army. And then they're at Texas State. So that defense is going to be tested. All right, we'll see how that happens. And then they get South Alabama. So that is the battle for the belt. That's a big one. Uh, and then they go to Monroe. So there's a while before the Cajuns have to play at Troy uh, to see how the West is uh, shaking out. But right now, right now, Troy appears to be the best team. If they have that kind of offense, 600 yards and are <laughs> of offense and giving up only 203 yards on de defense, that's tough to beat. All right. Troy did turn it over once. They lost a fumble. That was the only turnover in the game. Just a domination by Troy. And again, Kamani Vidal leads the nation in rushing. Let's see who he's ahead of specifically. Because sometimes, especially now nowadays with running backs, it's not quite uh, as obvious who are the nation's leading rushers. But let's just tell you who's he's ahead. I hope I get these names right. All right. So Kamani Vidal, number one, not by a little bit either, by the way. Uh, 835 yards. Jonathan Brooks. Oh, Texas, 726 yards. Uh, Audric, uh, S time 692 from Notre Dame, Imani Bailey, by the way, former Raging Cajun at TCU, 690 Taj Brooks, Texas tech 688. And then you got the Sun Belts Ishmael Mahdi from Troy, uh, from Texas state 676. So you got two Sun Belt running backs in the top 10 in rushing and Nate Noel at Carolina or at App state rather. Uh, is at 11. So that's three Sun Belt running backs in the top 11. That's pretty neat. Let's see what the receiving is because also really neat. You got Luther Burden the third from Missouri. Really good. 793. Malik Neighbors out of LSU. 771. But Colin Lacey from South Alabama is third in the nation in receiving yards. That's awesome. He is among the nation's league leader, uh, nation's leaders in average per catch too. Not quite well. See, that kind of changes it when you get that. Kind of messes it up when you put the average first because you may only get, you may only get, you know, a couple of catches in there. So, but yards wise, Colin Lacey from South Alabama is among the nation's leaders. Uh, he only, here's the thing. He's only got 39 catches, got 723 yards. Luther uh, Burden got 54 catches for 793. So Colin Lacey's got, more yards uh, per catch. He's having a heck of a season for uh, South Alabama. And we'll see if South Alabama has put this together uh, after a big win against uh, Monroe. Uh, they're not playing until next Tuesday. Who do they have? All right. Maybe we'll come back and do that with an early week seven. With an early week seven preview uh, coming up next. Now time to tell you about game time. There we go. 
You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront, so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees, and you can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I'm always nervous I'm going to spell that wrong. <laughs> I really am. It's not one of my strengths when reading a word on how uh, to spell it. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On College. Again, I knew I was going to do that. I knew I was going to do that. Locked On Sunbelt, your team uh, every day. All right, let's take a look at quickly at week seven because we have, I mean, there are some. Uh, there's one. Let me see if there's more than one big-time matchup. You got JMU and Georgia Southern, and that is huge, all right? A couple things in this ballgame. Can Georgia Southern, or I'm, I'm sorry, it's in Harrisonburg. Can James Madison keep up with Georgia Southern? All right, this is not, this is uh, going to be a real interesting ball game because Georgia Southern has this dynamic offense, and JMU has a really good rushing defense, but a really bad passing defense. So some of that is a couple of things here. They give up a bunch of pass yards because they're always ahead and teams are trying to catch up. Virginia, South Alabama, uh, Utah State, all right, Troy. So they were always way ahead. That's why uh, they give up 311 yards passing. And they only give up 40 yards rushing. So you can't run against them. It'll be interesting. Interesting to see how they do that uh, for Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern's leading rusher, Arnold, only has 269 yards, so they don't rush it a whole lot. Davis Brin has been, you know, I think better than advertised. He's had one bad ball game, so the seven interceptions doesn't look great, but it's all from one game. It's all from almost all from Wisconsin. Otherwise, he only has two interceptions uh, in the other uh, in the other uh, four ball games. He's got 12 touchdowns. 1,600 yards passing, Georgia Southern, uh, 471 yards uh, of offense to JMU's 402. It's going to be really interesting because I think Georgia Southern only needs a couple of stops, and that's about it. Now, it's not going to be easy because it's on the road. It's first thing in the morning. It is on ESPN2, and, you know, did South Alabama show how to beat JMU, they gave up a bunch of, well, not a bunch, but three explosive plays that were the difference in the game, all right? If I read you some of these stats, I'm not sure you're going to think that JMU won. They did come up with 377 yards offensively, but only two for 14 on third down. They only passed for 12 out of 22, and they threw an interception. They rushed 3.1 yards uh, per rush. They had 10 penalties. So if South Alabama didn't sleepwalk through the first 10 minutes of that ball game, it may have been a different story. So maybe I like Georgia Southern in this ball game. It's tough to go against JMU. Let's see what the line is. Cause it can't be that big a difference, right? In the line, it's gotta be close. Uh, it is three and a half. Yeah. I'm going to take Georgia Southern. I think Georgia Southern is going to go in there. And uh, as the great philosopher, GJ Kinney said, light up the scoreboard. All right, let's see what else we have for uh, week seven quickly. Uh, Cajuns are off. They get Georgia State next week. You get Troy at Army. This is Army's seventh game in the Sun Belt. Just join the conference already. Seventh game in the Sun Belt in the last two years, I should say that. Uh, Georgia State is hosting Marshall. Georgia State looking to rebound. They did not play well against Troy last time out. They had the week off, and Marshall's defense is an issue. So we'll see... You know, can Georgia State, you know, keep up with Marshall? Because Marshall's offense is looking pretty good. Uh, and can Marshall stop anything? Because they haven't been able to stop anything the last two games. All right. And then Texas State looks to rebound against Monroe. 
Uh, that is uh, Saturday as well. And then I think we have, right, another Tuesday game uh, next week. You do have South Alabama hosting Southern Miss. In fact, you have a couple of early week games next week. Uh, South Alabama and Southern Miss on Tuesday are uh, on Tuesday on ESPN2. And then Marshall hosting James Madison. I mean, if JMU wins, they'll be undefeated at 6-0. Marshall beats Georgia State. They'll be 5-1. And, and that's on the big boy station. That is on ESPN. So uh, ESPN, uh, the Sun Belt, is getting a lot of publicity here uh, TV-wise over uh, the last few weeks. It always seems that there is uh, some some game on national TV. Cajuns in Georgia State in two weeks, late night, and Mama Schultz is coming in. Uh, it's a 7 p.m. ball game on a Saturday. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for continuing uh, to support the channel. Uh, please do so. If, if you're just new to us, uh, we will be talking. Basketball is just around the corner. We'll stay focused on football uh, as well. And we know that baseball and softball are big in the Sun Belt as well. So please subscribe on YouTube. Also, don't forget the audio downloads. Uh, wherever you get your audio download, your audio podcast, just search for Lockdown Sun Belt. Uh, the most popular ones seem to be Apple and Spotify. And if you're doing Apple podcasts, please rate and review. Once again, I'm your affable host, Dave Schultz. And you've been watching and listening to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow. And we'll recap uh, App State and Coastal on Lockdown Sunbelt.